very spontaneous and impromptu but I'm in a good mood. I just had me a little midnight snack. It's literally midnight. And I decided I wanted to do a quick weave wig for you guys using glue. So let me show you guys what we're going to be using. First of all, we're going to be featuring a brand by the name of Yolisa. They sent me over some of really nice bundles. Um, I believe this is a frontal in four bundles or for three bundles. Yeah. Yeah, it's four bundles. It is 20... 224. Honestly, I don't remember what I have. Um, yeah, 22, 22, 24, 24. And then they also sent me over a frontal, and the frontal is 20 inches, so really pretty hair. You see that? Super beautiful. The frontal is full, but not like too dense. Um, nice 13 by 4 frontal. So, what you'll need for this video, you're going to definitely need your glue. We're going to be gluing this to our head if that makes any sense so we're going to be needing some glue i find these at the beauty supply store sally's you can probably get them on amazon i'll definitely link um this down below you're also going to need your caps this is a shower cap specifically um this is like a, a, a multi-pack this is a 10 pack that i got from sally's so i'm going to be using one of these um to protect my actual hair and then on top of that, I'm going to be using a wig cap. So you have a choice. You can use an actual dome cap or you can use two wig caps and they kind of will equal the same thickness. So I'm not going to hold you. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the tutorial. Let's get started. So jumping right into it, step one is to protect your hair and get it as flat as possible. I don't have a braid up right now, so I just do two cornrows and I kind of like twist them around and bobby pin them under in the back to make it as flat as possible. You can definitely get your hair flatter um, if you know how to braid, smaller braids, but this is what we're working with. I have a wig cap on, I have my shower cap, which is going to protect my natural hair from the glue, and then I have my dome cap, and this is what we're looking like. There is a little bit of hump in the back from my braids, so again, if you can get it flatter, get it flatter. This is the front one we're working with. This little area that I'm pointing to is what we're going to call the ribbon. Not sure if that's the right terminology, but that's what I've been told it's called, so we're just going to roll with it. So I'm going to just take my glue and I'm just going to get a nice, full, healthy amount of glue onto the ribbon. <laughs> Try and load up a good amount of the glue onto the ribbon without getting it onto the lace and making sure that there's enough to stick onto the cap yet not too much that is going to like spill over and get extremely messy like so. You're going to let it dry for maybe about a good 10 to 15 seconds, kind of just to get tacky a little bit. Best way to describe this is making sure that every time you lay glue onto a track or to a frontal, give it that amount of time, like that 10 or 15 seconds to kind of dry and get tacky, just the exact same way you would do eyelash glue with your eyelashes. You know how you just get it a little bit tacky? That's the same technique we're going to use for this entire wig. Now, the thing that you can do to help you here is to, before you go ahead and glue at the glue, Put yeah. the frontal onto the wig cap and kind of play dress up, I guess you would say, or like a dress rehearsal and see where you yeah. want it to sit. Use like a white eyeliner or like a nude lipstick or something like that to mark the, the back where the track is going to start in the back part. And that way, whenever you put the glue on, you okay. kind of have a marker of where you want to stop it. I just slid it across the frontal until I felt like it was good enough. And truth be told, now that the wig is um, on my head and it's been a day or two, I would say go up a little bit more. Like you know how you can see the cap? Make sure that you can't see any cap at all and it'll be perfect. Like right there is where I should have laid it, but I laid it maybe about a quarter inch too far back. And that's just my experience. The elastic band will definitely counteract that and help you. So this is our first bundle. We're going to use about two and a half bundles in this process. We have four available, but we didn't need them all. So before I lay that first bundle, I am going ahead and kind of trying to pull um, the hair that kind of got stuck in the glue on the cap since I did kind of slide it. If you mark your cap properly before you lay the frontal, your hair won't slide and you won't get glue stuck. The glue did not interfere with the final product when it was all said and done. I just let it dry and then kind of pulled it up. There is like a minimal amount of glue on my wig, but I promise you, it, it you can't even tell once the wig is done. 
but I do or I did allow the glue to dry on the front so for probably about five minutes off camera before I even got to this point I just wanted to make sure it was completely dry because one thing you do not want to mess with is the frontal sliding and moving after the fact because once you lay this frontal it is not allowed to move so now that we're onto our bundles all I did was I measured the bundle around and see how much of it I needed I cut that piece off I applied as much glue as I needed to the track I allowed the track to get pretty tacky maybe about 15 seconds and then now we're going to apply it to the the back part of the wig use your fingers to press it in and kind of allow it to get dry before you let it go a great additional step would to be to use a blow dryer I opt to not use a blow dryer simply because I get hot it's loud all that I just let it air dry and I go about my business so now that we're on the second track remember there are about five steps you're going to use with every track you're going to measure out how much hair you need cut off the excess apply the glue allow the glue to get tacky for about 15 seconds and then line the track up and apply it to the cap Well, I guess you can say there's six steps because once you apply it, you want to go ahead and press it in and kind of hold it there for an additional 15 to 20 seconds to make sure that it's tacky and it's attached and it's going to dry. And we're going to move on to our third track. Whenever making a wig, I like to make sure that the, the first maybe three tracks are very, very close together as far down close to the nape or the end of the track as possible. That way the wig won't look thin as sparse. Like you know how you part your hair down the back and you part your hair down the back I can't talk today and you you know have one side of the hair on your over your shoulder and the other side of the hair over your shoulder sometimes you might have that little gap in the back where it just looks like you're a chicken head in the back and it looks loose because you didn't put enough tracks at the nape so I like it to be very full at the top very full at the back and kind of equally yoked throughout now I got a little bit of glue on my arm all you do is you take your fingers rub it together and you can get it right off I also got a minimal amount of drops on the hair and I just allowed it to dry and then just pulled it off lightly and we are good to go so we have about what two to three tracks on already and we are on the right path from this point you have your frontal on you have your first few tracks laid and you have an idea of how this is going to work at this point you should be done in about another 20 minutes because once you have the technique down pack and you've done a few you're good to go and it's just going to go smooth sailing so turn on some music turn on a netflix and chill kind of movie or some youtube videos and get in your zone and you'll be done in no time so I was going to skip through a lot of this, but I decided to put up the entire process of making this wig. I'm a visual learner, so seeing every single step kind of helps me. Like as I've learned different techniques throughout YouTube, I kind of hate when I'm watching and they do like the back first three or four rows and then they cut and they're automatically at the top. I kind of want to see each track visually as it goes up 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 and up and up and up because somehow some way I feel like if I don't see it from start to finish I feel like I missed out on something even if I didn't but literally you're just measuring out each track across cutting out what you need putting the rest to the side adding glue across the entire weft or the track letting it get tacky and then you apply it and you press it in really 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 good and help it to get dry if you get glue on your skin just roll it roll like a ball kind of like how you used to do your boogers if you play with your boogers when you were little disgusting i know you will get glue in places that it does not belong you will get glue all over your fingers you will get glue on your arms you might get glue on your shirt somehow it might be a little bit of glue on your leg especially if you are a beginner you will get glue in places that it does not belong and it is okay because right now the goal is just to get the wig done and wherever you get glue ultimately you can get it off just remember that allow the glue to get dry and you can get it off So you see I have glue on the track right there, I'm sorry, on the cap. We're not even going to worry about that. Like at this point, I don't even know it's there, but you can go over it and it will still stick and everything is okay. Just don't panic. So I believe this is our second pack of hair or bundle because we're not using beauty supply packs through hair, right? Um, this bundle is 24 inches as well. So we have two 24s going in the back. 
we're going to need a third bundle, but we're only going to use about a half of it, maybe a quarter. And that one is going to be 22 inches. And then the top or the frontal is going to be 20 inches. So it's 24, 24, 22, 20. And I apologize for the crying kids in the background. It is nap time in the Lions residence and no one wants to cooperate. Cooperate? What? Cooperate? And in this video, my ring is not cooperating. I find that at nighttime, my ring always feels a little bit bigger. Don't know why. So this is progress shot. We're getting somewhere. It looks like we only have a little a bit of space to go, but we're really only like halfway through. It's going to take another 15 to 20 minutes at this point. Let that glue get a little tacky. And also, don't forget, a blow dryer is a great asset to this process. It definitely will cut down the drying time on yeah. the glue on these tracks. I just choose not to, again, because it does get a little hot underneath that hot dryer. It's just an extra step, in my opinion, where I got to keep lifting up, put it down, turn it on, turn it on, turn it off. Especially because I'm doing this while my kids are asleep. Just not smart if the kids are asleep, right? I press for dear life. Let me think of some tips I can tell you guys because I just really want you guys to see this process visually. Also, don't forget to pull the frontal forward just a little bit more before you glue it down. This is literally perfectly matched to my hairline, which is good because it's matched to my hairline. But at the same time, you guys know you want to finesse it and make your hairline look a little smaller or your forehead look a little bit smaller. And if that's the case, and that's something that you are interested in. Pull it up, I would say, a half an inch forward a little bit more. Um, what other tips can I give you? You can co-wash it. I'll talk about that in the end. Um, so make sure you stay tuned for the end for those tips. I have everything that I use to style this wig from start to finish, including the products I use at the very end, um, in the description bar. Now we're on our third and final bundle. That fourth bundle, we're not going to touch, we're not going to open, we're not going to need. If you want the wig to be much fuller, that is an option. You can definitely do that. I'm showing you here. Dang it, I wish I would have pushed the frontal a little bit more forward. But I do have my sideburn space and all that greatness. I believe we have about two or three more tracks to go, so we're at the home stretch. Also, I'm interested in knowing what are you guys' favorite products to style your hair. Now this is some really beautiful curly hair, wavy hair. Um, I have it linked in the description bar for you guys, but you guys have seen over the years the types of products I've used. And I've never asked you guys or you've never given me any suggestions on products that you like. I feel like you guys are holding out. I'm giving you all the juice, all the tea over here and all the items that I love, but you guys never go in the comments and be like, girl, I like this product. Try it out. Let me know some things that you guys love in your household, under your sink, as far as what you use for your baby hair, what you use on your curly hair, what you use to shine up the hair when it's straight, your favorite flat iron. Let me know all that stuff in the description bar. Finally, we are done. As you guys can see, two and a, about a two and a half tracks, or two and a half tracks, two and a half bundles and a front so it makes this wig super full. Definitely didn't need the rest, but of course, this is all about preference. I love the fact that the wig lays super flat, even with the wig and the hair being super full. Now, once you've made your wig, you are only about half of the way through. You still have so many other steps to do, but this is what the wig looks like when you take her off. You just want to marry the tracks with the frontal. Also, you want to make sure that you cut off that excess lace. I kind of did a talk through here, but I decided to fast forward it, so excuse my mouth for blabbing and moving, but I just took off the frontal. Um, or the front piece that lays under the frontal of the cap. This is what the wig um, or the shower cap looks like. Literally no glue is on it. So it didn't transfer too bad. But you still want to make sure you put that thing on there. Because even those little specks of glue can damage your hair. So I'm going to go ahead and begin the process of slaying the wig. You guys can see here how the lace lays and how the baby hair lays. Super gorgeous. I'm going to tweeze it off camera to make it look a little bit more realistic and add some powder to make the frontal match my skin tone all that greatness if you guys want to see a tutorial on how I do this I have plenty I'll leave one or two below in the description bar below also on one side this is where I left sideburns on the opposite side I left none ultimately I cut off the sideburns because I don't want to use them I added an elastic band and you're about to see right now what the wig is going to look like finally this is a lighter hold than the um, 
hot glue that I typically use. If you do it with hot glue, it'll stick much longer. But this is just like quick 30 second glue, um, you know, and it's kind of like you never know. Like if you're gonna do it with the closure, the closure I think will last a little bit longer. Because how long does it last? I always consider um, the glue method like this to be a quick weave wig. This is something that is ideal if you just want something that's gonna last like two weeks to a month. If you're trying to go six weeks, two months, three months, six months, eventually each track will eventually start to move and pull. Trust me, I've been in the trenches, I've been broke where this was really my only option and back then I was a chicken head. Um, I didn't have as much hair as I have now so I really wasn't confident enough to just wear my natural hair as is. So I literally felt like life or death. Like if I did this type of wig and back then we didn't even have frontals, we just kind of did it around and made the china bang which is horrible or the side part but we did the little ball in the middle where we put it together. Horrible, horrible generation to grow up in, right? Because now you guys have the options of a frontal to make it look super realistic. But when I used to do these wigs back in the day, even the China Bank, I would do it and I would make the wig. I would buy like nice virgin hair. Sometimes I'll buy the purple pack of the outre hair. I would make the wig and I would let it last as long as it could. I would keep a small bottle of glue in my purse because you never know. You stayed at your boyfriend's house, a piece of glue, I mean a piece of track might come up. And when the tracks come up, it literally would come up like right here and be sticking out like this. And there's literally nothing you can do but glue it down or like bobby pin it down or something like that. So I would keep this in my purse if you make this because you just want to make sure that in case a piece comes up, um, you're prepared. But after a while, if I keep re-gluing the tracks, eventually it'll start to get really cakey on that track as well as on that cap and stop re-sticking. Re Trust me, like I've literally made a wig like this and like kept it, tried to preserve it for like three, four months because I had no other options. But I highly recommend that you understand that if depending on the quality of the hair, if you do purchase nice enough hair, as long as the hair is still intact and in good shape, you can always continue to redo it. So I would rip all the tracks off the cap. I would wash them, deep condition them overnight, and then like, you know, dry them. And then the next day I would redo it on the cap. Um, in between, I would kind of try to pull off as much of the glue off of the track as I could so that it's kind of fresh. Um, or if you do this like one or two times and it um, gets to the point where you can't really re-glue it, you can sew the tracks on. The tracks are still good after this as long as they don't get too cakey. And if they get too cakey and you ain't got no money and you can still reuse the tracks, try sewing it on. And it's great practice because essentially your tracks are damaged anyway. So at that point you can try and learn how to sew the wigs, which is ultimately the best option honestly this wig fits flatter and snugger than even when i make my own mannequin head let me try and show you guys the cap in the back um, i would recommend that if you want to wash the hair or the wig you could stand over your sink and just wash the hair side by side um, and focus on not getting the cap wet and yeah I don't have really any complaints did my normal two step with the rest of the hair and pretty much what I do all the time twist out the hairline you guys seen how thick the hairline was at first this is about how much I twist out so I definitely went ham don't have to go as ham as I did if you don't want to, but I definitely had fun playing in this hair and watching YouTube videos. But thank you guys for tuning in. I definitely hope that you guys learned something. The summer is not quite over yet, so if you are trying to get a quick weave action going on for your Labor Day parties, back to school, want to be slain on the first day, um, whatever you got going on, this is just a great option for those of us who need something on the go or need something, something super affordable. If I was to go and buy like the beauty supply store hair, this is definitely a great option because trust me, when I used to be broke, I used to buy the purple pack of outre, thought I was popping, it was a straight hair, and make it work because I couldn't afford virgin hair. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Yalisa. All the information on this hair is linked in the description box. All that stuff that I used um, is listed in the description bar as well as some of my makeup items. So make sure you guys check all of that out if you're interested. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.